Right, we are off. What are you living in? What are you living in? It could be a skull from boiling right. water. That... Horrible. Oh, sausage. Right now, there are dogs that need help. You all right, Sean? He's having a fit. We suspect she's deaf. And there are heroes who are dedicated to saving them. I don't want to leave any animal in there. You're alive, why are you, aren't you? <laughs> Transforming their lives. I'm going to give them plenty of praise as well. Clever lad, good boy. She's been born with eyelids that turn inside out and then they start to rub. Finding them forever homes. They love chasing the ball, don't they? In a way, I think he's my guardian angel. Aren't you, mate? My guardian angel in disguise, you are. Giving our four-legged best friends a second chance makes it all worthwhile. To see them now acting like proper puppies is just lovely. They are the dog rescuers. I love my job. <laughs>On today's show, we'll see how some amazing dogs survive neglect, recover from serious injury, and even overcome anxiety to get a fresh start in life. And I'll be spending the day with older boy Tyson here at Millbrook Animal Centre in Surrey. He's been waiting to find his new home for over four months now. It's too long, isn't it, boy? Come on. Coming up. This is the little one I'm the most concerned about. Inspector Claire Wilson is determined to get treatment for the tiniest Yorkshire Terrier she's ever seen. I realise this is upsetting, but I am going to have to do what's in the best interest of him. I'm going to shut the door, otherwise he'll get stressed watching you easy. It's an emotional day for Hershey Bowl, as an owner reluctantly signs over her dog. You OK? It's the best decision for him. All right, darling, you'll be fine. Oh, don't get upset. And it's a life-changing rescue for skinny and scared Roxy. It can just show you what a dog can go through and still be a darling. And what can I do for you today? I'll pass that forth to the officers now and they'll assess the best thing needed for the dog's welfare there. In North Yorkshire, Inspector Claire Wilson is responding to a call from a member of the public. Yeah, that's no problem. Can you just text me the log number? About some dogs that seem to be in a bad way. There's a number of, I think, Yorkshire Terrier dogs. They're heavily matted, and also some of them are really underweight. It sounds quite serious, and I think the environment's not going to be very good for them either. So I need to have a look and see what's going on. I've been to lots of thin dog complaints. I would always have to start investigating that. when I'm walking up to a door. I never know what I'm going to find inside. You have to expect the unexpected. Hiya, from the RSPCA. We've just had a call about um, the dogs and the conditions that they're living in. Claire is denied entry by the owner. Her husband is ill inside and can't be disturbed, but Claire needs to see the dogs. Right, OK. Well, would you be able to bring the dogs to the door then so that I can have a look at them? The owner has five Yorkies altogether, and she brings them out to her car to be examined. <laughs> you cute, aren't you? Oh, hello. Hello, darling. <laughs> <laughs> so they've all got a bit of discharge coming from their eyes. Most of the dogs look in reasonable condition, but there's one exception. It's the little one I'm the most concerned about. So this is the one that I'm the most concerned about, cos he's got... Obviously, quite a lot of discharge coming from his eyes. But that's not Claire's main worry about the dog, 10-year-old Taz. He is very thin. I'm sufficiently concerned about him that I think he needs to go to a vet straight away. And it would help me if I can see what environment they're living in as well. The owner still refuses to let Claire inside the house, but does reveal that the dogs are being kept in one room. Five dogs probably shouldn't be living in one room, so I need to see, you know, what needs to be done in the rest of the house. The really important part of this job that you have the ability to negotiate with people. Oh, right, OK. I think with every animal, your protective instinct kicks in. Your main aim is to get that dog to a place of safety. I realise this is upsetting, 
but I am going to have to do what's in the best interest of him. And if you don't give me per permission to take him to the vets, then I am going to have to get the police out so that we enforce that. And I think it's got to the stage now that he's so thin that you, you should have done something sooner. The distressed owner eventually consents to let Claire take Taz to the vet. He might be 10, but he's as tiny as a puppy. OK, so if you just sign there... As the environment the dogs were living in is also a potential problem, Claire still needs to check inside the house. You have to take the person's circumstances into account, and I'm always sympathetic as to their circumstances. But we can't just walk away. If the vet considers that an offence has been committed, then if, if you refuse me entry to the house, I'm then going to have to go to the police and get a warrant to come into the house. So the only way that I'm going to be able to tell whether it's suitable or not is for me to come in and have a look. The owner finally agrees to let Claire in. The room the dogs are in isn't ideal, but it doesn't merit removing them. They just live in that room and then you take them out for walks. I'll get Taz off to the vets. I'll give you a ring and let you know what's happening. Thank you. Bye-bye. The woman's in a difficult situation. She's, her husband's very poorly and she's obviously caring for him as well. We take people's circumstances into account, but we've, we've got to make sure that animals go to that when, when they need to. Tiny Taz is now off to be examined. The result will determine if he is allowed to return home. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. Download Veely now. Ten-year-old Yorkshire Terrier Taz has just been handed over to Claire Wilson for a vet check. Hello. Hello, little one. Right, should we put this lead on you? I think we'll lift you, you're so tiny. Oh, you're not going to weigh much, are you? Cutie pie. The poor old fella is worryingly thin. It's OK. It's OK. Vet Michaela Wright's job will be to determine if he is suffering and whether or not he should be returned to his owner. Good boy. Can sit on there? Boop. There we go. Oh, my goodness. I don't think oh, I've had a one point, one point something kilo duck. You're a good boy. Titchy Taz weighs just a kilo and a half. He should weigh almost twice as much. There we go. All right, so if we start at the front, we've got... Quite a lot of discharge from both eyes, which is a bit crusty, and his eyes are quite inflamed. All right, little man. I know. So that one's even more inflamed, but there's quite a lot of discharge there. Don't look at your teeth, little man. I know. Oh, oh, sweetheart, he's missing quite a few teeth. And what's left, there's a little bit of tartar on, but they're not too bad, are they? Hey, Taz. That side's worse. So he's got quite a lot of tartar on there and there's some gum recession and on the carnassial tooth, so it's possible that that'll need to come out. Feeling over here, his lymph nodes are fine, but you can feel that his shoulders are incredibly prominent, um, his scapulae. So we would classify this as a body condition score of one. A body condition score of one out of nine means the poor old chap is emaciated. Moving along his spine itself, the muscles here either side of the spine have got muscle wastage and all the pelvic bones are more prominent than they should be. He's got muscle wastage on his hind legs and less muscle than we'd expect on his front legs as well. This lack of muscle is affecting Taz's stability. He's standing strangely on his back legs, so now he doesn't want to put this right one down. And his kneecap is luxating on this right leg. So the kneecap is slipping on and off it? in the joint, yeah. That's not going to be helping him. What would you do about that? Does he need surgery? Or? I think at the moment we would wait and see how it develops when he's got some weight back on. Right, okay. um, and in an old dog like this, we wouldn't necessarily go for surgery. It is likely that he's been caused unnecessary suffering. I also don't think his needs are being met. They're not noticing that he's underweight, for whatever reason that is. So whether he's eating enough or whether it's because he's ill. 
Taz will have pain relief for his knee and drops for his sore eyes. He also needs some blood tests to check for any underlying medical conditions that might be causing his emaciation. Right, let's go this way. Hmm? Good boy, this way. Good boy, there's a clever lad. Right. OK, give me a break. Oh. I know, that was mean, wasn't it? Wasn't that bad, really, was it? He said, yes, it was. It was. Good boy, well done. Come on, come and have a cuddle. I know, it's OK. It's OK, she's going to get you some dinner. She is. What's this? Oh, what's this he got? Oh, you're interested, aren't you? Yum, you're very yum. hungry. God, he's very hungry. Well, he's, I would never expect a Yorkie to eat like that, particularly as we've just upset him, you know. He, I would think he's probably very hungry, aren't you, little man? Yes. <laughs> now, you can't have any more or you'll be sick. As long as his bloods are OK, we should be able to get him back to uh, being a normal, healthy little dog. Hopefully, Taz has a bright future ahead of him. Meanwhile, Claire will be interviewing his owner. I don't think it was deliberate neglect. It's clear that she's got a lot on her plate. Um, she's, she's not in ideal situations her, herself. But we've got to sort out Taz's health problems. I know that he's, he's going to have a full belly and um, obviously not be in any pain tonight, so that's the main thing, as far as I'm concerned. We'll see how tiny Taz is doing later. Taz's owner didn't want to give him up. But in the Midlands, another owner has decided that might be the best option for her pet. For the past few weeks, Inspector Hershey Bowl has been dealing with an owner whose dog Simba has a profound attachment disorder. It's been destructive. You know, she told me uh, yesterday, it's actually got a little bit worse now in that it's made a hole apparently in her carpet. And these are all classic signs of what's called separation anxiety. The dog just can't cope with being left on its own. You know, it's a very common problem. And it's one that's very difficult for an owner um, to deal with. As soon as a dog knows it's on its own, it, it will get distressed. And, you know, I really feel for her, actually. You know, it must be really difficult. Simba's owner, Jennifer, has come to the reluctant conclusion that she'll have to give up her beloved dog. It's a very sad day for her because um, she loves this dog, she doesn't want to have to rehome it, but she understands, you know, that it's the best thing for the dog, and I have a lot of respect for those kind of owners. While some dogs are quite happy to be left alone for short periods, others become upset and agitated when there's no one around. As a result, they may bark, howl, go to the toilet indoors, or chew everything in sight, just like Simba. Hi, Jennifer. You all right? So, God, is this what Simba's done? Yeah. So when did he do this, then? When I was at work. Oh, God, look. He's had a good to go at that, hasn't yeah. he? Look at that. Yeah, he's chewed the bottom off my nose. So he's actually taken yeah. the entire bottom off? That's how anxious he gets. Yeah. Like is he chewing and barking? Yeah. Like, the only time he's quiet is when he's actually chewing. And this is just the beginning of the damage. Right, OK, so did he rip up this whole carpet? Yeah, and this is the bathroom door. Oh, God, right, yeah, yeah, is that right? Got to go he, at that. He's just, he's just chewed it, he just doesn't stop. He's actually chewed the wall yeah. in here as well. He's chewed he? literally everything. When you look at it from this side, actually, he's done a bad, lot of damage, yeah. hasn't he? Right, let's see the little menace then. Oh, Simba, hello, darling. Hello. Oh, Simba, oh, you're quiet today. Worried Simba, a seven-month-old husky lurcher cross, might be chewing the house, but he's having trouble eating actual food. Do you know, I think the threat, he's dropped, ever so slightly dropped some weight. He has. Yeah, I've he has. That. I've, I've just looked, see. I don't know whether see. it's stress. Yeah, he's, probably. He's not really been eating normally. Yeah. Like, I don't know, it not, seems really agitated. Yeah. So probably this behaviour is getting worse yeah. and he's getting more and more anxious, isn't it? I mean, I can put food down for him when I do leave. It'll still be there by the time I get home. Really? So is he waiting for you to come home? Yeah, to as, leave? Soon as, as soon as I come home, he'll eat. Really? As soon as okay, I that's home, interesting. He'll have his water. Like, so he's so anxious that he can't even eat. Eats. You see, that's um, that you know, that, that's obviously uh, 
you know, quite severe because it's affecting his uh, ability to want to eat anything yeah. as well. And that's what scares me the most because I don't want him... It's like he's not, not comfortable yeah. till you're around. Yeah. Oh, Simba. The dog can be trained to deal with separation anxiety, but this takes a lot of time and sadly Jennifer's not able to commit at the moment. Look at your ears, you look like a bat. Simba. When he eats as well, his ears go back. Your ears are huge, aren't they? Oh, well, I think we've made friends at least, eh? We've made friends. Oh, darling. Oh, you are good. Um, I can go and grab a lead. Have you got one? Yeah, I've got a lead. Yeah, yeah? OK. Well, if you, if you want, Jennifer, you can bring him down and yeah, put him in the van. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. And Jennifer, I'm only gonna I'm gonna shut the door cage and then I'm just gonna do otherwise he'll get stressed watching you, you see. Alright, darling. You good boy. You okay? It's the best decision for him. Alright, darling, you'll be fine. Oh, don't get upset. Honestly, I know it's not easy. I promise you'll be okay, okay? He's, just, he's a lovely dog. You know, look, you've done wonders with him, actually. You know, he's very sociable. Not a problem in that area at all, is he? You know, so this is gonna be a, a Sort of a bit of a new start for him and for you, but you've done a you've done a great job. All right, darling, have a try and have a good day. Uh, thank you. Go make yourself a cup of tea. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Simba's off to the rescue centre, where he'll receive all the help and care he needs. Hopefully, he'll soon find an owner who can devote more time to him. Come on, Simba. Just picked up a black female crossbreed type. Five days ago in Lancashire, the RSPCA attended a complaint about a horribly emaciated and injured dog. There you go. Oh, oh, a bit drowsy. She's got various scars and injuries to her face, her legs, all over. She's in very poor body condition, very thin, emaciated. The tip of her tail is off. You can just see the bone poking out. It was one of the worst cases Inspector Natalie Taylor had ever seen. Today, she's brought the dog, a crossbreed called Roxy, for a checkup. Come here, dear, sweetie. She's got scars all over her. Uh, she had fresh and old injuries. To be honest with you, my first impressions with her that she's been used as a bait dog, where she's been thrown in with other dogs to just basically attack, or she's been kept with other dogs that have been attacking her. Poor Roxy is still in a terrible state. I feel like somebody needs to pay for this. There's no excuse how anyone can think that's OK to do that to a, an animal. It's absolutely disgraceful. It's been five days since Roxy was first found, so today vet Sean Taylor is checking on her progress. Just sit her on there now, that's all. Uh, 22.7 thereabouts. Come on. She's 21.0 last time, 22.7 today, so... I mean, it's only been since Thursday. It's improving, so yeah. I mean, she's still, she's still emaciated. You see yeah. the bone prominences and what have you. But she's still got a body condition score now of one out of nine. There you go. Okay. Roxy is so thin, it's hard to believe that a few days ago she was even skinnier. Once they reach a body condition of one out of nine, that indicates that they've got no subcutaneous fat left, but they've also started getting muscle atrophy. Myself and my colleagues pick up a lot of skinny, skinny dogs, skinny animals. I think she's one of the skinniest that I've had. The main thing is she's got appetite and she's putting that on. What's your opinion about all the scars? They are consistent with fight injuries. So, you know, I mean, she's had a tussle with a, another animal somewhere along the lines. I mean, these injuries here, they could be consistent with a bite, unusual for a bite, but certainly when you get linear scars of that width, they can be the canine teeth. But the one that's, that she's got on her face is a reasonably fresh puncture wound that's filled up with pus, and that's certainly consistent with a bite. We do yeah. need to carry on with, with more antibiotics just because it is still oozing. Luckily for Roxy, tests have ruled out any underlying medical cause for her being so thin. She just needs food. Well, she's put um, 1.7 kilos on in five days. But you should really be looking over a period of probably the next month, and she should be somewhere near her, her ideal weight. 
The next step for Roxy is to stay at the kennels. Steady. Where she'll continue to be cared for throughout her recovery. I'm just so glad that we've got her. She's going to get four square meals a day, get this weight on her. When I picked her up, I was so angry. But this is why we come to work. It's just lucky that she's been brought to our attention and that we've been able to intervene and get her the care that she needs. Seems that Natalie has quite a soft spot for our Roxy. She's absolutely adorable. You know, I fall in love with every animal that I pick up. They just give you that unconditional love, you know. I mean, we don't exactly know her background, but still, she's so affectionate, even though she's covered in injuries and she's emaciated. She's so loving. Go on, then. This is the nice part of things, knowing that they're going to be in good hands now and well looked after and loved. We'll catch up with Roxy later and see what effect a bit of TLC has on her. Also coming up, Simba, the anxious husky lurcher cross, proves a tonic for his new owners. Simba's helped me with my anxiety, with my depression, brought me out my shell a bit like. And Tiny Taz gets himself a makeover. The good thing is that this dog will probably be much more comfortable without these teeth. Roxy, the emaciated crossbreed, has been in kennels for the past month, recovering from injuries she is thought to have received while dogfighting. And she's definitely enjoying the love she's been getting from animal care assistant Karen Bohanna. This way, Roxy. Good girl. Sit. Sit. Well done. You're a clever girl. Considering she has been so starved, she's really gentle. at taking food off you. Come here. Good girl. It can just show you what a dog can go through and still be a darling. <laughs> she just can't believe how lucky she is. <laughs> can you? She's like, I love this. I love this. Is she good? To fatten her up, she's been on four meals a day. The dog, not Karen. And the feeding regime is paying off. So she was, when she came in, she was 21.9. And the scales today say that she's 28.6. Well done. That's an amazing, <laughs> amazing amount of weight. So yeah, it's very good. We're very happy with that. Ideal weight-wise, we would like it to be about 31, 32 kilograms. So that's only about two kilograms off being perfect. She's now finished her course of antibiotics and painkillers, so it shouldn't be too long before she can find her forever home. So when she first came in, she was really timid, obviously very, very thin, lethargic. She didn't really play and interact. Now she's come on, you can see, leaps and bounds. Roxy said, cook it already. Cook it. She's showing all signs of being happy and content with the love that she's getting now. Aren't you? Right? I think it's fair to say that she loves people. She loves people, don't you? For a certain inspector, the feeling was definitely mutual. Seems her rescuer, Natalie Taylor, just can't stay away from Roxy. Good girl. Oh, she looks fantastic. It's always the same when you bring a skinny dog in. You're always shocked. Good girl. My last image of her was skin and bone. And see how good she looks now. She literally looks like a different dog. Really does. She's got really nice, shiny coat. You know, and she's obviously happy. <laughs> Good girl. Wow. <laughs> I cannot believe the difference. She is absolutely beautiful. Aren't you? <laughs> Sit. 
She's got a great personality. Just shows you how quickly they can come round. Like, even her face looks different. I mean, last time I saw her, her face, side of her face was very swollen, but she's beautiful. She's a really pretty, nice dog. There's just one hurdle to be clear before Roxy can be rehomed. Has her past experience made her scared of or aggressive with other dogs? We'll find out a bit later. But first, it's time to find out the latest on Taz. The Yorkshire Terrier, who's just been rescued by Claire Wilson, is about to have his painful rotten teeth looked at by vet nurse Jeanette Tungsvig. Hello, sweetie. You're tiny. <laughs> what does it look like in here, then? Shall we get you your pearly whites back? A titchy old chap like Taz needs extra care when it comes to the anaesthetic. Goodbye. Well done. Oh, it's all right. All right. Your veins are so fragile, <laughs> sweetie. <laughs> I know, I know. Good boy. I know. This is the problem we have with dogs that are mm. so tiny and so old, is that we have very, very fragile veins. I think you're Good falling asleep, boy. though. But they managed to get him safely under. Well done. So now, because he's asleep, we can put a tube in to make sure he can breathe. Doesn't look like he has many teeth left. Now Jeanette can begin her examination of Taz's mouth. There should be about 44 teeth in the mouth. This dog is missing loads on the bottom. She starts by removing the tartar so she can see the damage beneath. Well, the gum should have ended here. So it's all lifted up. And these are actually the roots of the teeth. That would be painful for the dog. If the teeth are causing anybody pain, then those teeth are not worth having, so... There we are. That's half of it. That's the other one. Now we'll just make sure it's nice and smooth. It's a large tooth for a little dog, so the gum needs stitches to help it heal. And then it also decreases the amount of food that the dog traps in there. These are absorbable sutures, so they'll just fall out over the next couple of weeks. But by that time, the mouth would have healed. It's a bit of an extra challenge, stitching on something that's this small. If you brush your dog's teeth every day, or frequently, you can probably decrease the chance of getting to this stage. And long term, would he always need to be on soft food? Because he's not got many teeth. He so. shouldn't need to, really. Um, the gums are already very firm. Uh, and they don't chew their food very much. Yeah. They just swallow it, most dogs. It has a lot more teeth on this side as well. This one has to come out, because you can see that you can see the, the root. And then the one behind is actually loose as well, so we'll take that one out. The good thing is that this dog will probably be much more comfortable without these teeth. Altogether, Taz has six rotten teeth removed. And you'll look much more presentable, Taz. Oh, you're already waking up. He's going to be a bit confused, so he might do a little bit of singing, because he's not quite sure why he's here. Taz will need to be on soft food for 10 days while his stitches heal. Yeah. He'll go home with some tablets, Bye. antibiotic tablets, yeah. and some pain relief as well. Bye. So, you're right. I believe he has six teeth left. His bloods show that he had an infection going on, which is most likely due to his bad teeth. Two or three weeks, we'll know if, if he's gaining loads of weight. Hopefully he can continue to, to be a happy little dog. With his nasty gnashes a thing of the past, things are looking up for Taz. Here, little man, do you fancy this? And over the next few weeks, with plenty to eat and tons of TLC, He's starting to look like a very different dog. <laughs> Come on, boy. Shall we let you off the lead so you can have a proper run around? Good boy. Oh, you found freedom, hey? <laughs> he's amazingly mobile, especially considering he's got problems with his, with his knees. Should we warm you up a bit, hey? He was quite withdrawn when I picked him up 
and I think he was used to being carried around all the time. Now he seems a lot more like a, a proper dog. He's happy to run around on the ground and just, just seems um, a lot happier. <laughs> He's steadily putting on weight as long as he has regular vet checks and stays on his painkillers for his poorly legs. All I see is a bright future for him now. I think he's gorgeous. <laughs> I'd take him home if I, um, well, I have to set my limit at three, so <laughs> I haven't got a vacancy at the moment. Hopefully it won't be long before the little fella's future is settled. Yeah, let's go this way. <laughs> Come on, see? Animal centres across the country are chock-a-block with dogs of a senior age like Taz, all looking for their forever homes. On average, it takes an older dog three times longer to find a home than a puppy. Back at Millbrook Animal Centre in Surrey, I'm with Joss Iveson and Staffy Tyson. Tell me about Tyson here. Oh, Tyson's 12 years old, so oh. he's one of our little sort of golden oldies. Um, he's been with us about just over four months. Is it harder to rehome an older dog, do you find? Yeah, it is a lot harder, Tyson being 12, because people tend to want the young dogs. Mainly they come for puppies and things like that. They think, oh, it's 12, it's getting on a bit, you know, we've got much life left with it. But they're socialised yeah. and they're house got all the, That's the nice bit, you haven't yeah. got all that to worry <laughs> yeah, about. That's, that's what we say, that's our selling point. Yeah. It's like he's just a lovely companion for you. He's ready made. Yeah. He's ready to go. His character's there, you know what you're getting. It's not like when you get a young one, you've got to find out what it's going to be like. And he's immensely strong, so if you break down, he'll tow you home. Yeah, exactly, perfect. <laughs> so many assets, puppies. So many good. Puppies are Who rubbish. Who wants a puppy? Rubbish. Old-timer Tyson not only has his age to contend with, but his breed as well. Staffy types account for 80% of the dogs in rescue centres. And some people still a bit nervous about rehoming a Staffy because of their reputation. Yeah, unfortunately, because of the bad press, right. it still sort of has a bit of a stigma to it um, with Staffies. Um, you know, they're very much a family dog, love children, so gentle, loving and loyal. Yeah. So it's just really sort of trying to break that. And this one up. is socialised, he's house trained. Yeah, ready to go. He's ready to go. You know, yes, he's 12 years old, but look at him. He's look lovely. at you. Look at him. Look at you. So hopefully, you'll find a new home. Somewhere. Yeah, hopefully. We we'll do a special to appeal. Live Tyson. Yeah, live out the rest of his retirement, won't really? you, buddy? Yeah. Definitely. You're so pretty. Earlier, Husky Lurch across Simba was signed over. He was having problems with separation anxiety and his home was getting ruined. He's actually chewed the wall here as well. He's chewed he? literally everything. When you look at it from this side, actually, he's done a lot of damage, hasn't he? He needed to find a new owner who wouldn't leave him home alone and would have time to help him with his separation issues. Fast forward six months, and Lucky Simba's done just that. That's a good boy. With new owners, Susan Jones and her son, Darren. It was love at first sight. It was his character. We walked towards his cage, and he come running at us with a little ball. Our eyes met, and that was it. I knew he was the dog we'd like to bring home with us. First time we brought him home, he was quiet. He was quite shy. Not so shy now. But after... A couple of hours, he settled in and he was running about, straddling the garden. I can't imagine being at home about Simba. It'll be too quiet. Good boy. Simba's a much happier dog these days, and his anxiety problem has gradually improved too. He's not so bad now. We can leave him for short periods of time, whereas we couldn't leave him at all when we first had him. And nine times out of ten, there is somebody with him. Simba's new family have helped him cope with his separation worries and seems he's had a transformative effect on them too. Darren suffers with anxiety and he didn't want to go out on anything. You're a good boy. And when we brought him home, he us helped us and helped Darren because Darren is now going out and taking the dog, which has given him confidence in meeting other people. Simba's helped, helped me 
lot of my anxiety, been with depression, brought me out my shadow a bit, like going for walks. Let's have a walk Good now. Good boy. <laughs> Good boy. One, two, three. Good. Good boy. Good boy. My favourite thing about him is his cheeky personality. He just wants to play, constantly play. Yeah. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Once a stressed out and lonely boy, now Simba is enjoying being an important part of his new family. Good boy. He's full of life. I wouldn't part with him for the world. We're very happy to hear it. Coming up. You ah. two are lumps. Bouncy Roxy finds herself a new playmate. They love each other. <laughs> they really do. Five months after she was rescued, crossbreed Roxy is still living in kennels and she's got a new canine pal to keep her company, as well as animal care assistant Dave Butterfield. We've recently paired her up with another dog called Clay. Obviously, with Roxy's history of where she's come from, we weren't sure how she'd get on with other dogs, but she seems to have found a friend in Clay, and they seem to be doing really well together. Sit. Sit. Good girl. Looks like Roxy has already mastered the art of sitting, but this bouncy girl loves nothing better than a good run around with her new playmate. Okay, go on. There we go, we're gonna have a mad five minutes. You two are lumps. The clank just fell over her head. <laughs> they love each other. <laughs> they really do. Just like brother and sister, so they fight and then they play. Started to be able to really relax and just enjoy yourself. Just need someone to adopt her now. It's long overdue. Yeah. Animal care assistant Ellen Dodson reckons she needs a very special owner. Roxy does not know her own size. She's very puppy-headed, but a very big dog. She's huge. People really do need to put the training and the effort into her and be really patient as well. Um, you know, she's come from a bad background, so I'm sure there's something still in there that remembers that, so she needs to make sure that she is loved. Oop. This. <laughs> I do love how they do that. <laughs> Roxy has made a miraculous recovery from her horrible ordeal. All her wounds have healed really well, so she's only got a few little scars just left on her. She's looking really good. Her weight's all beautiful. Her fur's beautiful. We're really happy with how she is. Yeah. Go on, mister. Good boy. See you later, Rocks. Come on. We'll see you later. As well as giving her clay to buddy around with, the staff have been keeping Roxy stimulated with agility training, but it's still a work in progress. We've tried to get her to do some of the agility stuff, and she's, she's not quite picked up yet. <laughs> but she's getting there, I think. You can do it. Good girl. You're just going to lean on you all the way. One day you'll just jump both. Some dogs take to it quite quick. I tend to find sort of staffies, collies, terriers. They're usually straight up and over. And other dogs, maybe more sort of lurcher types, aren't as keen. But she's like an American bull cross lurcher. So American bulls will be happy going over it, so. Come. Now, she's, <laughs> she's picking up everything else. It's just certain things. She'd rather find her own little way round. Uh, but she's really good in terms of getting her to come and sit now, so you can sort of call her over. Roxy, come. Beep, beep. Sit. Good girl. Roxy's owner has never been traced, but this big softy definitely deserves to find someone to love her and take her home. We're keeping our fingers crossed that it happens soon. So what's the latest on Taz, the skinny Yorkie with the wobbly knees and just six teeth? 
he was signed over to the charity and his owner received an adult written caution. And we're happy to say he very quickly found his forever home with Susan Smith and family and he's got a little sister too, five-year-old Yorkie Poppy. I've had Taz for uh, coming up to four months now. We'd always wanted another dog for Poppy to try and bring her out of our shell because she's quite timid. And it was just pure luck that I happened to look and saw Taz's photograph on the website. Paul. High five. Good girl. We've tried teaching him how to play with the toys and asking him to sit, and he just seems a bit clueless. <laughs> sit. Oh. <laughs> he doesn't really understand what we want. But Taz does know exactly what he wants. Treats and cuddles and Poppy's food. You like Poppy's food. <laughs> Always better than your food. Come on, Taz. Good boy, Taz. Well done. Taz definitely has um, a good appetite, but if he gets the chance, he does kind of pinch some of Poppy's fruit throughout the day. Oh, she's going to leave it lying around. So we've just got to keep an eye on him, really, and make sure that he doesn't eat all of her food as well. Once a worryingly emaciated old fella, this ten-year-old is back to the peak of health, and with the help of his daily painkillers, he certainly doesn't act his age. He's quite lively, and I didn't think he would be for being an older dog. He absolutely loves going for walks. The slightest hint of anybody putting a coat on or anything like that, and he thinks he's going out, and he, he comes alive. He just really wants to be out all the time. Sisters Charlotte and Hannah now have a dog each to walk. Taz's knee issue actually improved quite well since we first got him. The distance we take him out on walks has like gradually increased, so now he can go on longer walks. Come on, Taz. Come on. Taz's new family have given him a fresh start, and he's made their lives better too. Up and down the country, animal centres give thousands of dogs a second chance in life. This is made possible by a dedicated team of staff, but also by an army of volunteers. Hi, Sally. Hello, Alan. What have you been up to? Come on, I've got to take this dog for a walk. I know. Let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> Who is this? This is Guinness. Gin oh, look at that. He knows his yeah, name. Yeah, he knows his name. Yeah. Just the four miles today. <laughs> Coming up. Come on, darling. Come on, baby. Inspector Lauren Bailey steps in to save Tiny, a Yorkshire Terrier in serious need of TLC. She really needs to get to a vet. Her nails are really overgrown. She's really suffering from an awful skin condition. I'll just get over the glass. Oh. All right, darling. Let's see a bit of glass here as well. Two dogs are at risk of injury at a crime scene. Inspector Anthony Pulfer rushes to help. There's a, a bit of glass in the address, you know, and although dogs are trying to avoid it, just want to double check. There's nothing on the dog's paws. <coughs> and saved from the dinner plate, eight dogs' incredible journey from a dog meat farm in South Korea to a happy life in the UK. It's been raining constantly. It's absolutely freezing. It's a wet day in Oxfordshire. We work in all weathers, no matter rain or shine, and, yeah, it's pretty miserable today. I can't really see anything, to be fair. Inspector Lauren Bailey is heading back to a house where a dog has been reported with severe fur loss. This property stank. I could smell it from outside the house. I looked through the letterbox and I saw two little dogs. One looked absolutely fine. The other looked like it had a, a lot of fur missing, which was part of the complaint. And what I worry is actually that that smell also comes from that dog as well because of that skin condition. I don't know what's wrong with that dog right now. When she visited a few days ago, Lauren left an assessment form recommending a vet saw the dog. 
She's hoping the owner has taken her advice. house and I can smell the house from outside. They're always really shocking to walk into. Can you smell that smell in your house? Inside, the owner says the smell is due to lack of ventilation. If we go into the living room and then maybe we open a window, because I can't actually breathe. It's so sad that people live like that. If they're happy, then who am I to judge? But if it's damaging their health and a dog's health, then it's my job to step in. With some welcome fresh air, Lauren can turn her attention to Tiny, the dog that's worrying her. Do you see the fact that all her fur is missing? That's because she's got a skin problem that she needs to get to the vets for. The owner says that due to personal problems, he hasn't taken Tiny to a vet. If you would like to get her signed over to the RSPCA so we can treat her, and get her sorted and then rehomed, you then don't have to worry about her. The owner agrees it's best to sign five-year-old Tiny over. All right, take care. Thank you. Yorkshire Terrier Tiny barely has any fur on her back end where she's been scratching. Come on, darling. Come on, baby. When an owner agrees to sign a dog over to me, it means that I'm able to take the dog away and it gets the care that it really needs. Oh, Lily! The owner has finally accepted responsibility and done a good thing. And, yeah, a good job done, in my eyes. Tiny has suffered for long enough. The sooner she gets medical attention, the better. Yorkshire Terrier Tiny has been signed over to Inspector Lauren Bailey, suffering from severe fur loss and infected skin. You ready, darling? Come on. So Lauren's rushed her to vet Richard Knight. Hiya. Hello. 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 You all right? Hello, Tiny. Thank you so much for seeing us. That's all right. Right. How can yeah. I help you today? <sighs> oh, look at you. Hello. This is Tiny. Oh. She's been signed over. OK, so what's the history? <sighs> Basically, apparently, this has been on and off for a long okay. time, but he's given us shop-bought products, which clearly haven't worked, okay. hasn't been to the vet. What would you describe that smell as? Well, it's kind of a very musty, yeasty smell, and that's very typical of when you get kind of a, an infection of the skin. There is a normal yeast that sits on the skin that yeah. when you get inflamed skin overgrows. And it smells a bit like that. Yeah. And it's something called Balletsitia, which is like a yeast <coughs> infection. Um, but you've got evidence also with all these kind of red spots, these raised areas yeah. of typical other infection going on, which is likely to be bacterial. It's something that hasn't really been uh, dealt with appropriately. And I yeah. think really we need to make it more comfortable because it's like us. If I had an itchy skin like that, I'd want to get treatment. And it's not just her skin that needs attention. Her nails are badly overgrown. That one's really grown under there. Mm. We need to trim those down a fair bit. But she's a bit sore on her feet. She's mm. a bit sensitive on her feet, understandably. Give you a bit of a pedicure. <coughs> Yay. Should we give you a bit of pedicure? Yeah, yeah. you look pretty. You look pretty. On top of her nail and skin issues, there's another potentially more serious problem for Tiny. So we have got quite significant memory lumps here, quite a large isolated lump there. You can't tell whether they're benign or malignant until you've actually removed them. The tumours potentially have been there for a long period of time. Make her comfortable and then we can look at how to manage those lumps a bit better. So what we're going to do, we're going to get her onto some antibiotics, but I think actually she could do with a nice soothing uh. bath. Tiny will need medicated baths twice a week and Richard would also be taking skin scrapes to find out the cause of the infection. We suspect potentially there's a, a flea problem, yeah. whether it's a mite problem, so other parasites could well be making them itchy. She's lovely, aren't you? She's really lovely. You're very really so lovely. calm. 
Hey. If I didn't have the couch at home, you'd come home with me tonight. Oh, yeah, this much. Oh, that good. She has struggled quite a long time in a household that just didn't know how to care for her. But overall, her future is bright, and that's the whole point, you know? We're supposed to make their lives better. Thank you so much, Richard, for no all that you've all. done. While Tyne is being treated, she'll be placed in temporary foster care. Hopefully, she'll be well enough to find herself a forever home soon. And with Tiny in safe hands, I'm back with one of the safest pairs going, volunteer extraordinaire, Sally. So, Sally, how often do you come and walk dogs? I go Wednesday and Friday. Yeah. And then car boots and the gala days. You're racking up some miles, then? Oh, God, I've done a few miles in those, <laughs> over the years. I, I like it, though, and I love animals. So that's nice, then. Keeps you in the outside. Come, yeah. come rain or shine. Well, the dog's got to go out, haven't they? Yeah. You know. I think, actually, Sally, they think that you've yeah. got to get out. That's the thing. Oh, of course you have. Get Sally That's out. That's what keeps you going, mate. <laughs> well, I think Guinness is about done. It just... quite makes me want to go to the pub. Yeah. But should we just go and get a cup of tea? <laughs> As you can see, rescue dogs like Guinness here are well looked after. But it's not just in the UK where dogs need help. Elsewhere in the world, there are other charities that are devoted to changing the lives of animals in need, too. In South Korea, there are around 17,000 farms which breed dogs to be sold at market for human consumption. The law is somewhat of a grey area, and although elements of the trade are illegal, it still goes on. But attitudes are changing. Increased pressure from animal welfare groups and a rise in pet keeping means the practice is becoming more widely condemned, particularly among the younger generation. And with support from overseas, farms are closing down. A team from Humane Society International, led by Wendy Higgins, have come to one such farm to free 200 dogs. Oh, now she doesn't want to get out. Dogs never cease to amaze me. Some of the dogs that we deal with on these farms have been through such immense suffering and they have no reason to trust or even to like us. These animals don't understand what it means to be loved and yet it's so moving to see how desperate they still are to be friends with people. They're so trusting. The majority of these dogs will be rehomed in the USA, but eight are bound for Britain including Coco and Poppet and Grey Terrier Cross Simona. For these lucky dogs, it's a chance to start afresh. I know they're going to be bewildered. It is all they've ever known, and they're terrified of what might be on the other side. They don't know it, but their lives are about to change forever. After three months of health checks and preparation, their big day has finally arrived. The dogs have touched down at Heathrow Air. The press are out in force for this feel-good story, and it's an emotional moment for Wendy and everyone involved in their rescue. Oh, my God, there's Coco. Thank you. Right. Thank you. I am listening. I'm just a bit overwhelmed. Hi, guys. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. It's amazing to see them again. I feel really emotional, particularly for Coco and Poppet. I have a real soft spot for these guys. They were living in such appalling conditions on the farm, in a tiny cage about the size of a, a rabbit hutch. So glad that they've stayed together in the crate. And I can't wait to get them out and have a cuddle. Sharing Wendy's excitement is charity supporter Roger Mugford, who's happy to see his favourite new arrival. Hey, Simona. Fantastic to see you looking so good. She looked at me, and I'm afraid when you have that look, you can't walk away. 
but it's been a three months love affair and I'm feeling quite emotional about it actually. <clears throat> about the desperate situation these dogs face, you know. Simone has spent much of her life trapped in a cage. But today she'll get to do what your average dog takes for granted. Walk on grass. Now, young lady, see how quickly she's coming round. This is good. Welcome to the UK. Yes, welcome to the UK. Most of these dogs, obviously, they've spent their entire lives in tiny cages. <laughs> They see their, their cage mates being dragged out of the farm for the last time and they never come back. So they're, they're naturally fearful of people. But I think they're doing remarkably well. But Coco and Poppet are finding the experience a bit overwhelming and they're refusing to budge. Well, it's only natural given how scary everything must be. The dog's life-changing journey isn't quite over yet. After what must have been a disorientating flight, they're now off to kennels. We'll see how they get on there a bit later. On the other side of London, Inspector Anthony Pulfer is on his way to help some dogs who found themselves in a difficult situation. Quite a serious job has just come through to the RSPCA. Police are on scene requesting assistance where someone's been arrested, possible dog, Staffordshire Bull Terrier type dog with an injured leg, possibly broken, and also another dog that's possibly walking on glass. Uh, when the RSPCA receive a call of an emergency nature, we sort of try and attend that job within 30 minutes. Luckily, on this occasion, Anthony's only 10 minutes away from the property. Hello, sir. Police inform Anthony that the dog's owner has been arrested after an altercation. With no one to care for them and with blood and glass on the floor, they're no longer safe. Is there any problems with me entering, do you think? Going to a true emergency is quite rare. Hello. I am shocked sometimes about what happens behind closed doors. It's okay. It's okay. Hello, buddy. But that's why we have to be the voice for that dog. Okay. Let's get you down on the floor, buddy. It's okay. We've got like a large mastiff type dog that's uh, obviously a bit distressed. Got a lump on its rear left leg. I just want to check the staff and see what's going on with his legs. Much glass here. No, there's no glass here. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's that's either extreme arthritis or even like a fixed joint on the rear right leg, all like age related and been going on a long time. Anthony's thoughts are confirmed by the police, who found some medication for arthritis. Apart from that, both dogs appear to be in good condition, so they'll only need to be cared for until their owner can collect them. Hello, Ronnie, it's Anthony, you all right? Yeah, we've got a little bit of environment issues. Just need to come away for temporary care. Thank you. Take care, bye-bye. Now, Anthony has to bring the two scared dogs out. It's OK, I'll come back to you in a sec. The first is Cassie, the arthritic staffy. I'll just get over the glass. Oh. All right, darling. Let's see what you like. Let's see a bit of glass here as well. Come on, then. Yeah, it's a uh, good age dog, bless it. Just very unsteady on the back legs, so that medication would definitely be related to that. Dog, well done. There's a good girl. Let's have a look at your feet, darling. There's a bit of glass in your dress, you know, and although dogs will try and avoid it, I just want to double-check that um, there's nothing on the dog's paws. Good girl. 
Good girl. Fortunately, Cassie seems to have escaped unscathed. <sighs> Come and speak on ball for a sec. Good girl. It's OK. It's OK. It's OK. You're getting a bit too eager, bless her. In you go, sweetheart. Just there for a second. Turn around for me. With Cassie safe in the van, Anthony can get Soldier, the Mastiff, out too. All right, buddy. Come in there with our walkies. Can you get down there? Good, good boy. Hello, Soldier. All right, Soldier. Good boy. Let me check his paws as well for glass. He's got a couple of fatty lumps on his body, but also he's in good shape. Yeah, I don't know, no glass in the feet, luckily. These are well looked after elderly animals, but have just been caught up in an awful situation. But just as Anthony's about to load Soldier up, the owner's brother arrives and offers to take the dogs while the house is cleaned up. The police and Anthony agree it's the best option for them. That way they'll be with someone they know until they can return home. Just to reiterate, obviously, so these dogs are going somewhere that she's safe and not like that. Having a brother that can then now take the dogs away to a cleaner environment, with no hazards, a good start point. But you've got to, at the time, think what's right for the animals, and getting the animals out of the situation was all we wanted to do. Anthony confident that Cassie and Soldier will be well looked after, his job here is done. Coming up, an owner has to part with her beloved Border Collies, Fionn and Taffy. I just feel so sorry for her because, you know, in an ideal world, she should be able to keep her dogs. And we're back with Coco and Poppet, the pair rescued from the dog meat farm. Hey, boys. Come on. The eight dogs rescued from a South Korean dog meat farm by Wendy Higgins and her charity colleagues have arrived at kennels. Just hello, hello. I think if we let them out actually in their kennel. So far, frightened pups Coco and Poppet have refused to leave their crate. But now, it seems that they're starting to feel confident enough to explore their new surroundings. And they're beginning to trust humans. They must all be a bit strange, a bit bewildering. And they're not to know that they're safe yet. So we need to get them to the point where they realise that it's all over and that they don't have to be afraid anymore. <laughs> While Wendy helps Coco and Poppet settle in, Roger Mugford is bonding with his favourite arrival, Simona. He's an old man and his dog. You know, we've been together for years. <laughs> Just, it's incredible how mature and confident this dog is. I'm, really, I'm just so amazed that it's adapted so quickly. These lovely dogs that were headed for the dinner plate are now safe at last. You are so squiggly. I mean, one of the wonderful things about today is just seeing them taking it all in and some of them walking on grass for the very first time. It makes me proud to know that uh, they're going to have a peaceful night's sleep in a warm bed with a blanket. They've got toys for the first time ever. The farm that these dogs came from was probably the worst that I've ever seen. It was really traumatic seeing these poor animals having to endure life in such a hellhole. So to be part of the team that rescued them from that, to bring them out of that place, something I'll never forget. They're actually sleeping in their beds really peacefully. It's just lovely. And when they're ready, it'll be time to find a much-deserved forever home. In Northampton, Inspector Michelle Hare has a tough job ahead. 
She's on her way to collect two border collies from an owner who is seriously ill and can no longer look after them. This lady is called at the absolute right time. The dogs are OK. But she knows that if she doesn't sign them over, then that, that potentially they will suffer and she isn't prepared to put them in that position, which is a really, really brave decision to make at this stage. With Michelle en route, owner Julie is taking her beloved dogs for one last walk. This is Fionn and this is Taffy, brother and sister from the same litter. I've had them for nearly six years. And they're my babies. They, they need lots of walking, lots of fuss, lots of grooming. And unfortunately, due to my ill health, and I haven't, I haven't got the strength to do it anymore. It's a heartbreaking decision for Julie, but ultimately it's going to be the best option for Fionn and Taffy. They're going to a better home than I can give them at the moment, but it's like losing my baby. <laughs> Thank you. I'll fill in the sign over form and then there's a history form for each of them as well so we know as much about each of them as um, possible. These two playful dogs are blissfully unaware that it's their last day in the home they've known for six years. Understandably, it's a very difficult moment for owner Julie. Yeah, it's breaking my heart. I know. It's, it's a massive wrench, isn't it? Kids have all left over, haven't they? I know. They're the last ones still around, I aren't know. they? I'm doing the You are? Can't care for. I think that, you know, as hard as the decision is, it's a really brave decision to make, you know, really brave. They adapt really well, so we'll do our best for them, I promise you. With the paperwork signed, it's time for Julie to say her final goodbyes. I just feel so sorry for her because, you know, in an ideal world, she should be able to keep her dogs. And... Are you going to jump in? Or are you going to need lift? Oh, good boy. Oh, she's in. She's in. The game for Everything's just gone wrong for her, and um, she's been forced to give them up. It's really heart wrenching, isn't it? Do you know? Head in, pumpkin pie. Good boy. Summit, you concentrate on getting yourself well, OK? You take care. Hopefully, Fionn and Taffy will soon find a new home with an owner who loves them as much as Julia. <laughs> Meanwhile, it's feeding time back at Leybourne Animal Centre. And whilst the dogs here get their dinner, Sally and I are having a well-earned tea break. How long have you been volunteering for? For the 41 years. 41 years? Yeah. Do you mind me asking, in a rude way, how old you actually are? I'm 98. 98. Congratulations. I'll be 99 in December. 99 in December. I'm going to give you a bit of Battenberg. Is that a good size? Yeah, that do. Thank you. You mustn't give this Thank to you. your dogs, must you? No, no, no. Oh, no. Church window cake is for <laughs> adults only. So you're still volunteering, even at yeah. your time of life? Yeah. Can you tell me what you've brought with you, this little blue case here? Yeah, this is me, um, long service medal. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's lovely, isn't it? There's Queen Victoria on it. Mm, it's nice, isn't it? For, for volunteering? Yeah. The Queen Victoria bronze medal. You're an inspiration to many, it says here, <laughs> with tireless hard work. Yeah. 
And you're passionate about animal welfare. Oh, well, that's very nice. Yeah. So I should put, no, look, yeah, I'm no, put I've got that away neatly. I'm going to try not to get Battenberg on it. Yeah. And then you're going to do it for another 41 years? Yes. Good. <laughs> Good. Up there. Up there. <laughs> now, is this right? You want a toy boy? Is that what you're after? Yeah. Oh, so I've found one. And me? Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's an unexpected development. <laughs> Will I have to wear a collar? Yeah, no. No? <laughs> We could just sit about and eat Battenberg, and then every now and then you could take me for a walk. <laughs> I need a volunteer. <laughs> it's nice to feel wanted, as Simona has been lucky enough to find out. It's now been three months since the little Terrier Cross arrived in Britain from South Korea, and she's had quite a journey from a hellish existence on a dog meat farm to a happy life on a very different farm in the Surrey countryside. Come on, Come on. She's found her forever home with her rescuer, Roger Mugford, and his menagerie of animals. And she's got a new name too, Shadow. She very quickly earned the name Shadow because she was my shadow. She was half a metre behind wherever I was. I knew exactly where Shadow was. She was there. My home isn't just for dogs. We keep cattle, horses, sheep. Shadow's had to get used to all of these different species. In the early days, I had to be really careful that she wouldn't spook and run off. Now she's becoming increasingly independent. Hello, good. Ooh, you good. Ooh, you darling. Ooh, you up. Today, Shadow's going to try something new, an agility course. Got everything here. But before she has a go, Teddy is showing her how it's done. We're hoping that with Shadow watching Teddy, that she'll get the idea. Beautiful jump. Uh-oh, he's done it before. Hope you're paying attention, Shadow. He's an old hand of this. Look at the speed, my goodness me. Oh, oh, over the A-frame. Blimey, that was good. What do you reckon, Shadow? Can you follow Teddy? Come, over you come, over you come, over you come. Jump, over, come, jump, jump. No, 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 no. Jump, 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 jump. Come on, come on, come on. Oh well, maybe we should be better at the A-frame. Hey, 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 hey. Up, up there, come on, come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. You are, oh, wonderful. Pretty darn good. Well, I think you deserve a big reward for that. Well done, Shadow. You're getting the hang of it. This is a dog who had no early training, um, who has proved to be easily highly trainable. Hey, and, there, and, there. and this way, and this, and this way. Come on, and this way, and this way. Good girl, and sit, baby. Oh, yeah, yeah. This little dog has been a delight. No, 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 that's a bit scary. She's got a little way to go, but boy, when I think of the journey she's made, such a rapid journey and with such a positive outcome. Come on, come on. Hey, up, up, come on. Hitch. Yes, yeah, wow, that deserves a big reward. Great. She did it. Good job, Shadow. And this amazing dog has yet another string to her bow, driving a tractor. No, I'm just kidding. Can I come in my tractor, please? All the board? You see the cows, see? Good girl. Little Shadow really does deserve her happy ever after. We'll catch up with another of the South Korean survivors, scared little Poppet, later. It's, it's an absolute joy to see this little dog enjoying life. She's not somebody's meat on a plate. And if your home is just crying out for a rescue dog, we could have the one for you. It's been seven weeks since Poppet, the nervous Chihuahua Cross, was rescued from a dog meat farm in South Korea. She's now found a loving home with broadcast journalist Pip Thompson, who heard about her journey in the press. Good girl. She's super cute, but she's incredibly nervous, so she's going to need a lot of time 
and attention. I've got two other dogs, which I know will, will help her become the dog that she should be. Her new big brothers are Tibetan Terriers BG and Billy Boy. And she also has a new name, Bindi. They first met her in her foster home uh, on neutral territory, which I think was really important. And none of them batted an eyelid. They were all extremely comfortable with each other from the word go. But getting close to her new owner wasn't quite so easy. When I brought her home, she was very scared, and I sat on the floor for a long time with her, just trying to coax her towards me with, with treats. Of her own volition, she just came over and she lay down beside me and snuggled up to me. And that was the first time I realised, yeah, she's going to be OK. She's starting to trust me. It's, it's an absolute joy to see this little dog enjoying life and to see this little tail wagging. She's not somebody's meat on a plate. Good girl. Once confined to a smelly and cramped cage, Bindi is now learning to enjoy her freedom. She loves just being around and just sniffing outside. She loves being outdoors. Good girl. Bindi, Bindi sit. Bindi sit. Good girl. See, that's amazing. The fact that within the space of six weeks, she's already almost sitting on command. So we'll be working on the shaking paws next. Bindi was rescued by a charity team headed by Wendy Higgins, who is keen to see how she's adapting to her new life. She looks so happy and settled, doesn't there she? she is. My gosh. Do I hold her? I'd I think to. she knows you. Hello, darling. There you go. Hello, baby. This is exact. I mean, this just takes me back. I was on the farm and um, took her out of her cage, and this is exactly how I helped her. Really? Come on in. Come and meet the other boys as well. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Come on, Bubba. She's so settled with you. It's lovely how relaxed she is. The last thing I said to her before I put her back in her cage was, it was going to be all right. Aww. It's going to be OK. We're going to get you out. And I'm just so delighted that I was able to keep my promise. Yeah. Because here she is. Bindi is now inseparable from her two brothers. They eat, sleep and go everywhere together. Come on, Bindi Pops. They especially love heading out to the lake for walkies. Come on. Bindi's come a long way to find her new home, and no one is more thrilled for her than Wendy. Today's been a dream come true for me. <laughs> to meet Pip and see that, you know, Bindi has really landed on her paws in a lovely, loving family. Where's Billy and BG? I feel hopeful about the situation with the government in South Korea. We have a new president who himself has just adopted a dog who was rescued from a dog meat farm. Politicians are starting to talk about an end to the dog meat trade. So I do think there's never been a better time, really, to be campaigning to see an end to this suffering. Bindi, come on. All eight of the dogs that came to the UK from South Korea have now found loving homes. They've gone from being on death row to adored pets. Wonderful news. And I'm glad to say that Fionn and Taffy, the two collies who were sadly signed over by their owner, have also found new homes too. Now, remember Tiny, the Yorkshire Terrier who had severe fur loss and infected skin? Almost eight months on, and her rescuer, Lauren Bailey, is dropping by to see her in her new home, with new mum and dad, Lorraine and Paul Wacknell, who've renamed her Pippa. Hi, is it Lorraine? Hi, I'm Lauren. Hi, Lauren. Lovely Lauren. To nice to meet you. <gasps> Hi! <laughs> Hi! Hello, little lovely. 
Looking at Pippa now, you'd never believe she was diagnosed with mange. It's amazing what medicated baths, antibiotics and a bit of TLC can do. Oh, she's looking amazing. Yeah, she was not this dog. I mean, are you sure it's the same one? <laughs> are you sure it is? Yeah. Are you sure? <laughs> you have a wonderful family dog here, don't you? Yeah. yeah. She's slowly settling in. She's very outgoing. She's uh, inquisitive. She loves the back garden. She does come out, whereas when we first had her, she didn't even want to come out the back door. I think what's really nice is seeing her fully recovered. And when I picked her up, she just had the most horrendous skin condition. Sometimes it's completely so damaged that they'll always have those bald spots, but it doesn't look like she's ever been damaged whatsoever, which yeah. is why I say that you sure this is the right dog. Yeah. So she looks so different. And all she needed was a bit of TLC, some vet care, Definitely. and and a loving family. And she has all three now. Hello, mate. Good girl. When she was rescued, Pippa also had mammary tumours, which have been removed, and we're glad to say she's now got the all clear from cancer. Oh. <laughs> and then you get the obligatory... Let's, let's get that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That, get that, sign, that is a sign of a happy dog. She's just so relaxed and happy, and you know what? I hope that she doesn't remember what life was like before, and now she just has a beautiful future ahead of her. I'm over the moon to see her like that. Like it actually makes me a little bit like emotional just knowing that that she's she'll never have to suffer like that again and that's why we do what we do. Oh, I'm your funny. As you've seen in the programme, many rescue dogs don't have the best start in life, but that doesn't mean that they can't make incredible pets. The RSPCA care for thousands of them. And there's often lots of work that needs to be done to get them ready for rehoming. And here's just one of the wonderful dogs they've been looking after. This is Abby. She's a five-year-old female Doberman who's been at Southridge for just about a year now. She was brought here because she wasn't being looked after properly in her previous home. Yep. Good girl. Abby finds kennel life quite stressful. She'd much prefer to be in a home where she can run around playing ball and go for long walks. Abby gets overlooked probably because she is quite a big dog. You know? Abby needs ideally an adult only home, one where she's the only pet, where she can get lots of walks, get a chance to play ball games as much as possible so she can get rid of some of her energy. And just one where she's going to be the centre of their attention and be loved and adored. Cool. Good girl. Abby deserves her forever home because she's not had a very good life so far. She spent last year in kennels. She's got a lot of love to give and she's just looking for someone to give that love to and to be loved back. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, if you're looking for a four-legged best friend in your life, remember to make your local rescue centre your first stop where you'll find plenty of deserving candidates desperate to brighten up your home. That's it. Oh boy. On today's show, we'll see just how many people are involved in rescuing a dog, from the person who makes that first call right through to the vet and the animal centre staff who make each dog's recovery possible. Joining me is Boris. He was rescued from appalling conditions where he wasn't being looked after properly. But the team here have been taking care of him for almost a year. And with his case now closed, he's ready to find a new home. Come on, Boris. Boris. Come on. Coming up. Come on. Come on. Come on, beautiful girl. A life-changing rescue for Collie Cross's Tippy and Custard. Calm down. Yeah. Calm down. <laughs> Calm down. She just literally... Nibbled herself. Red roll right in front of me. There, I can see that. Oh, Lily. The fight to save Nala, a collapsed Shih Tzu. It's just absolutely skin and bone, isn't you? And the amazing transformation of Bridget. Good girl, bitch. Good girl. One of 27 poodles caged in a house. 
Look at them now, it's totally different. Yeah. It's late afternoon on Merseyside, and Inspector Anthony Joins has one more job to attend to. We just responded to a complaint that I've had come in about, um, was mentioned to two dogs that uh, I've got really bad skin. A lot of the issues with fur loss and red raw skin and inf secondary infection is self-harm. It's the dogs, you know, they don't like having parasites on them, but, you know, and you can understand why, and they scratch themselves. So it's, it's not acceptable at all because it's so obvious and it's so easily treated and so easily avoidable. Anthony's had three separate reports about skin issues with the dogs at this address, so he knows it must be serious. Hello? I've had a complaint about the dogs, I just need to come and see them. Hello? I, I basically had a job come through saying concerns about the two dogs. You know, you walk into a situation where these dogs are red raw, the fur's gone, there's pus, and the smell from some of these skin conditions is awful. Really distinctive smell, and I don't know how you could live in that. I, I, it just amazes me. We have got a problem with the condition of them. They're suffering, aren't they, from, from a, quite a bad skin complaint? It stinks. It's like, you know, it's like secondary infection on the skin. The owner admits that one of the dogs has been ill for a few weeks, but says that she's been treating them. The problem is you go into a house and you, you ask a few initial questions, you get told one thing, but ultimately the animals are, are there in front of you don't lie. And it's at that point that you, you step in and, and do what you need to do. Allow me to take them to the vet. And if the vet gives me an opinion that they cause suffering, right, then they'll go to one of our centres, right, and then I, I will come back and do an interview with you and your partner. The owner is reluctant to sign the dogs over. They need urgent care, don't they? But agrees to Anthony's terms. Come on, come on, come on, beautiful girl. Come on. It was the last time you walked. It's nearly dark by the time the first dog is out, 12-year-old Custard. All right, all right. Just calm down, calm down, yeah. calm down, calm down. Oh, no. She's just scared, isn't she? Um, tail tucked right between her legs. She's obviously got extensive fur loss. She's an old collie cross type. She just literally nibbled herself. Red raw right in front of me. There, look, you see that? There. It's whatever it is, it's really, really itchy. Um, I'm causing her quite a lot of discomfort, so. Come here, girl. Come here. Please don't bite me. Please don't bite me. Oh, I can't. Don't be too stressed. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I know. Look, it's dark in there, it's nice. It's a very stressed lesson. Come on, Tippy, walkies. Come on, girl. Come on, girl. The second dog is 13 year old Tippy. Her coat is in an even worse state. Come on. Come on. Come on, girl. Come on, Tippy. Come on, Tippy. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Extensive fur loss again, but really crusty back end. <coughs> um, extensively long claws. Come, 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 come on, girl. Come on, girl. You stressed? <laughs> quite a distressed owner, but quite unacceptable what I found in there as well. What, as a, what we saw. They've both got extensive fur loss. Um, she says she's got no money. She's been evicted, um, but ultimately. You know, you have animals, you, it's your responsibility to get them looked after. And she's obviously failed these two quite badly. Anthony's hoping that vet Holly Jones can fit two more dogs into her busy schedule. Hello? Hello? Hiya. Are you coming back here? Can you hear that noise? Yeah. Yeah. Once they're under the lights at the surgery, we'll find out just how serious their skin infections are. It's early evening on Merseyside, and Anthony Joins has just rescued two dogs with extensive fur loss. 
Come on. And by the looks of things, they're both stressed. Oh, look at that kennel. What have you done? They're rolling around in their own poo, I think. That'll teach me for rescuing you, won't it? She's a good girl. Oh, she's a beautiful girl. She's a good girl. Oh, yes, well done. Oh. Vet Holly Jones has made time to see the dogs, and first to be checked over is Custard. A bit crazy. Um, Hello. This is Custard. Hello, darling. Hi. One of the two that I've just removed. So, um, I had a quick look at her in the house, which was a bit chaotic, but I, I couldn't notice any. She obviously got quite severe skin issue. Um, You've got pooey feet. I didn't notice any fleas or flea dirt, so I, I was suspecting it might be something more mighty. No, there's no flea dirt there, that's for sure. Oh. Okay, should we get some scrapes from you? Mites are the most obvious culprits for custard skin condition. Let's pop her up then. Whee! Good girl. We're just taking some samples of the skin, all layers of the skin, all the way down through the epidermis so that we can try and find those mites. Hey, custard. Good girl. A lot of these mites like to burrow in the hair follicle, so we have to scrape nice and deep. Good girl, custard. Tends to feel quite nice for them. I've got you, I've got you. Oh. Right. Holly takes two skin samples. Sadly, there are plenty of irritated areas to choose from. You can see where she's been itching over there, can't you, as well? Like scratching. Yeah. And there's like little, see there's like scabs there as well. It looks as if custard could have sarcoptic mange, which is highly contagious. And you can see where it's starting to go, can't you, down the legs here? Yeah, it's spreading all the way out, down. Thinning out. Okay, shall I swap over? Yeah. Good. Custard must be so sore and itchy, but things are even more extreme for her pal Tippy. Her skin is much worse because she's got this yellow discoloration yeah. over the top of it. Does that suggest a more more chronic? Of it, yeah. yeah. When they get damaged skin, either bacteria or yeast will overgrow as a result of the skin being traumatised. It's quite visible to anyone that this dog has a skin condition, so they can't say they didn't know. Obvious, could it? I know. You can see the way it all, it's oh, all yeah. thickened. You can see the yellow discoloration. She needs Malaseb baths for that skin and, again, the mite treatment. So both dogs were suffering from quite a severe skin condition, which is most likely due to mites. So we've taken some skin scrapes from both of them so we can have a look and see if we can identify those mites. As well as medicated baths, they'll need a quick working tablet to kill the mites. Tippy will also be given a course of steroids and antibiotics. It's certainly going to take about six weeks for their coats to look better and for the new coat to start growing through. So it's, it's going to be a slow process for them. Let's go. In here. Uh, in there. In there. Come on. Well, it's my job now to get her taken into possession um, under the Animal Welfare Act, which will be either a police officer or a local authority inspector, and then they can hand them over to us. Because I don't, I don't want them going back. Let's go. We'll catch up on Tippy and Custer's recovery later. See you in a minute. All right. Tippy and Custard are in safe hands now, but in Tyne and Weir, there's another dog in need of help. Hello. Hi, Jackie, it's Jordan from Custard Lane Street Park. Yeah, go ahead. It's late afternoon, and Inspector Jackie Miller is close to the end of her shift. We've got an emergency complaint coming through of a young dog. It's at uh, the Vets for Pets in South Shields. Jackie calls the vets for more information. It's Jackie from the RSPCA. Hi, we've got a, a little puppy in after his skin and bone. Right. He's made the, he, he can't even stand up. And Jesus, what is he? He's a shit too. He's only one year old. <gasps> well, I will be with you ASAP. If a vet has called me, there's got to be a really good reason why, you know? So, yeah, it, it's always going to be a bad one if a vet called you with a concern. No worries. The little Shih Tzu was found by a member of the public on a residential street, staggering and disorientated. 
Oh, Lily. And since she came in, she's gone further downhill. She has a microchip, but so far Jackie's been unable to trace her owner. Hello? Is there anything on the chip with a name? She's called Nala. Little Nala is in a very bad way. It looks as if she's been wandering the streets for days. What's a mystery is if she's been dumped or just strayed from home. We've tried feeding her, but then she didn't want the food. We've tried to force feed her and she's not having it. Her temperature's normal. Right. Um, she's having probably problems, difficulties breathing. Sweetie, she's just, this is absolutely skin and bone, isn't she? For now, all the vet can do is put Nala on a drip and make sure she's kept warm. So the vet says I've got to give you this. Hmm? I've got to hug you in. Get you nice and warm, eh, little one? You've just got no life in you at all, have you? Hmm? All wrapped up. She's not a well doggy. She's not how you would want to see a one-year-old puppy react, really. You know, they should be, well, bounding around like an absolute idiot. Especially a little crazy shit too. Nala's had blood tests, which so far haven't shown up anything specific. But the vet is still very concerned. I think we have to be realistic and give a poor prognosis. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that we can turn things around, certainly if we get her hydrated and we can get a decent meal into her. And is that something that we need to do by like syringe feeding us? Yeah. Every few hours? Every few hours. But there's a problem. Nala requires round-the-clock care, which they can't provide here, so she needs to be moved somewhere that can. I think in transportation, is she suitable for it? It's not ideal, but if it's her best chance, she needs to go. Conservation tonight, absolutely. She's not going to make it without it. I'll get on that one. Okay. Luckily, Jackie's managed to find another surgery close by that will take Nala for the night. I've never really had to move an animal this ill before, to be honest. Um, I'm a little bit apprehensive, but obviously the vets advise that it's the best thing for her. It's extremely touch and go whether or not she's even going to last till midnight. Right, better get going. All Jackie can do is hope for the best and get Nala to the 24-hour vets as soon as possible. You don't really get many cases throughout the year that's this sort of touch and go. The problem is these are the ones that pull on your heartstrings. You just want them to pull through so much. I'm trying to be as gentle as possible driving. I just, I've got a horrible feeling in my stomach when I get there. She's not going to be with us. It's an anxious moment for Jackie. Hello, little Oh, we've got a head lift. <gasps> Good girl. But thankfully, Nala is still with us. Fluid, one dog. Her condition can now be closely monitored. It's been a hell of a day. Just when you think you're on your way home to finish, you get called to a collapsed, emaciated, young Shih Tzu. That's just the most beautiful little thing. And to see her in such a dire state, it's just, it's just really upsetting. Let's hope little Nala can hang on in there. Poor little Nala. It's awful to see her in such a sorry state. Now, it's easy to see if a dog's suffering when it's left outside, especially if it doesn't have access to food and water or somewhere to shelter. But inspectors also come across dogs that have been kept inside without exercise or fresh air and very little contact with the outside world, which creates its own issues. A few months ago, in Cornwall, Inspector Lewis Taylor was working alongside the police on a disturbing case. A large number of poodles were being kept in one house. Downstairs was a very small kitchen, which, as soon as we walked in, we were just met with, you know, a sight that was bewildering, really. <laughs> you know, 5K just contained 21 dogs. As though they'd been, I don't know, stuck, packed and racked like, like items, like belongings, and not treated as, you know, individual beings. <coughs> and 
there was another another six dogs which were all confined to just one one room upstairs. Uh, so 27 dogs in one very small house. So it was just a, an absolutely pitiful sight really. My heart just really went out to them because they just they just looked like they had spent so long inside those cages and they just seemed absolutely petrified. It appeared to me that they'd probably never seen the light of day outside that house. 11 of the 27 poodles were brought to Brent Knoll Rescue Centre. One of the most nervous of them, four-year-old Bridget, is now being looked after by Andy Cook, a behavioural specialist who's working on regaining her trust. She's a little bit of a worried character, a little bit more apprehensive than some of the others. Too much. We will never know how much Bridget suffered at the house, but she's gradually getting better. Okay. So I just start giving her a little tickle on her chin, if she'll let me, because then that will lead me towards being able to attach the lead. Good girl. So, okay. Don't want that. And his patience eventually pays off. Good girl, Bridget. Today, Bridget is going to get another opportunity to say hello to the inspector who rescued her, under much happier circumstances. Hi, Andy, all right? Hi, yeah. How's it going? Yeah, not too bad. Hello. Hey, girl. Is this Bridget? Yeah, little oh, Bridget. Wow. Brilliant. She looks quite different from the last time you saw her. Yeah, she does, actually. She looks resembling more of a poodle. Yeah. And, um, and I could, you know, tell she's still a little bit sort of nervous, but so much better than yeah. the night we picked them up. So fantastic. But we're just hoping to start introducing her to some new people now. So, uh, being as though she hasn't seen you for a little while. Yeah, that's it. No better time. Oh, that's better. Good girl. Nervous Bridget looks pretty relaxed with Lewis already. Okay, off you go, Bridget. There you go. But it's when she's with her poodle pals that she really comes to life. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. So look at them now, it's totally different. Yeah. Hey girl, Bridge. Girl. Hello. Yeah, Bridget, I see so look at her now. She's so much, so much more confident when she's got her friends to back her up. Aren't you? Good girl. And you, yeah. It's been really nice to see them coming out of their shells today and running around and being dogs and playing with each other, being mischievous, being trouble, jumping all over us. The owner of the Poodles was found guilty of causing unnecessary suffering and banned from owning dogs for 10 years. She was also given a six-week custodial sentence suspended for a year. She's lodged an appeal. Hello, monkey! <laughs> Coming up, Nala, the little Shih Tzu, continues her fight for life. I don't want to give up on her. I think uh, we've got some decent chances mm -hmm. of getting her back to normal. And there's a big change in Tippy and Custard. Good girl. Good girl. Last night, Inspector Jackie Miller rescued a gravely ill Shih Tzu called Nala and rushed her off for emergency treatment. I haven't really slept just thinking about her, whether or not she's still trying to fight. Nala's now being cared for by Alison Kinnear and her colleagues at their surgery in Newcastle upon Tyne. As she's dangerously underweight, Nala's being fed little and often through a tube. She wasn't doing this yesterday. Um, she seems to be a little bit more responsive. Little Nala has a microchip, but so far her owner hasn't been located. Get me a little one. Let's feel your tummy. Alison thinks she knows why Nala is so weak. 
you know, she is a young dog, so we've got to consider is there any congenital problems going on. So certainly these little fellas can often get liver shunts. What is a liver shunt? Liver shunt is a problem with the, the vascular system. So instead of all the blood that drains from your, your pancreas, your small intestine, spleen, it should go into the liver, get metabolised and then go up to mm -hmm. the heart. In these cases, if it is a shunt, then it completely bypasses the liver. So um, all the nutrients go straight up to the heart, straight to the brain, around again. So then they start to get neurological problems um, and then they can start having weight loss. They don't grow very well. They can start having seizures. So um, if it is just down to nutrition, then really within the next 24, 48 hours, you'd expect that to really start perking up and you'd expect it to be ravenous. So Nala will need tests to check if it's a liver shunt as suspected. The good news is she's still here. She's still fighting, she's still trying. All right, I'll go and grab one of the hospital nurses and we'll get her set up. Fabulous. Thank you very much. I'll keep my fingers crossed. That hopefully I'll see her bombing around the place at some point. Um, but yeah, there's just a lot of work to do now to go and try and find out why she's got in the state in the first place. We'll catch up with poor Nala later. Earlier, we met Tippy and Custard and saw how bad a dog's coat can get when it's not looked after properly. Come here, this way. So I'm meeting vet Bruce McCleary to find out how to keep your dog's fur looking fantastic. So, Bruce, this is Boris. Boris has got quite a nice coat here, I think. Would you say? I think he's got a beautiful coat. He's actually in really, really good condition. And then, how do you go about keeping your dog's coat in this sort of good condition? There are probably two things that we need to think about. What we feed him, because of course your food needs to be a good quality food in order to keep the coat in a good condition. And also the things that are going to happen to him from the outside, things such as fleas and other parasites, because if he gets something on his skin that's going to cause him to be itchy, then he's going to chew his skin and then probably going to take some of his fur out. So other than fleas, what other things can cause deterioration in skin and fur? We see a couple of other things quite commonly. So you've got to think of mange. Classically, that's going to be the fox mange that people talk about. That's quite an itchy disease, so very often you'll find your dogs actually scratching quite a lot. Then apart from the parasites, we get a lot of dogs that have got allergic skin. So much like where you'd get hay fever from an allergy, very often your dog will actually get an itchy skin from it. Um, you'll notice a change very often because sometimes dogs with allergies start chewing, particularly on their feet, licking their bellies, and sometimes, of course, those dogs will also get ear problems at the same time. And it's a, just a sign of general good health if you've got a lovely coat like this. Oh, absolutely. You know, you've always got to think, does my dog actually look good? Because if you're not looking good, you're probably not that healthy on the inside. I know you've noticed. I've tried to keep myself together, but it shows. Thanks, Bruce. It's most instructive. Boris, you're a wonderful dog, but not a great example of terrible skin. No, he does have <laughs> amazing skin. Hopefully it stays that way. Hopefully it stays that way and someone will come and take you home, won't they? Boris's coat looks great, but the same can't be said for Tippy and Custard when they were rescued. For the past six weeks, they've been getting looked after at Wirral Animal Centre by animal care assistant Mandy Martin. Eddie, come. Good girl. <laughs> Good girl. Who's been giving them medicated baths for mange. This just helps along with the steroids they're on with their skin condition. And as you can see, it's become less inflamed already. And we've actually got the hair growing back. So they get this once a week. And they do, they're both really good. They're the only dogs I know that we've not had to clip up. They just mm -hmm. stand there. Good girl. Good girl. Today, their favourite inspector, Anthony, is dropping by to see how their recovery is going. Oh, we got... He's there. He's there. Oh, girls, look at you two. You still... Still got a long way to go, I think. Look much better, though, don't they? Oh, yeah, that skin settled right down. Sometimes the, the fur doesn't fully grow back, does it? But I envisage within a couple of months, I think we'll have nice glossy coats. Oh. That's one notable, noticeable thing right now. Is the smell's gone. Yeah. That yeah. secondary infection sort of yeasty smell that comes with, with mange. Even going just, even going into the room was unbearable. It took me days to get out of the smell out of my van. They're both doing really good. The meds are right down. 
baths and steroids. Really nice, thank you. Really That's nice. where we're up to with them now. That's brilliant. You know, even just the behavioural differences is miraculous, really. Yeah. And I think they're going to go on now. Strength to strength, aren't you? Oh, that's lovely. All right, you go. Hey. Hey, tips. Hey, tips. Both dogs are looking so much better. But there's been a sinister discovery for poor Custard. She's got a growth and needs emergency surgery from vet Becky McAlpine. Well done. So they've noticed a lump um, in her mammary area, so in her breast tissue, um, and it's cancerous. Um, so today we're going to remove all of her breast tissue on one side. It's a major procedure for custard. Um, so here's the lump, and it's only small, but they, they can be quite aggressive, these tumours, so it's better to take them out when they're this size. And you see that there's some discharge coming out of the nipple, um, so it's affecting the ducts as well. So that's why we just take this all out. With custard prepped for her big op, it's time for Becky to perform the mastectomy. So I'm going to make an incision um, around all these nipples and around this lump here, and then remove all the, the skin and the nipples and then the tissue that's underneath them as well, just in case there's any little bits of tumour that have got there. I'll just start at one end to make my way along. It's a large area that needs cutting, so if you're squeamish like me, you might want to look away now. So I'm going to start at this end where the lump is. Just see the lump there poking through. So I'm just going to go underneath that, uh, avoiding the blood vessels, and start moving my way along and get that out. OK, so now we just need to get the rest of it off, and we're there. The tumour is out, but there's still work to do. And just like with us, the less time spent under anaesthetic, the better for custard. So the lump's down at this end, but because we're taking out the whole chain of the breast tissue, so like with, with a person having a mastectomy, it's the same thing, so you just take all the breast tissue out on that side. So take it all off in one go, in, as in one strip. With the tissue removed, Custer's now been on the operating table for almost two hours, and Becky's ready to stitch her up. Thank you very much. The results from the breast tissue should be back from the lab in a couple of weeks. Meanwhile, Custard's going to have one impressive scar. <laughs> have you got your head? I'm taking the rest of the things. OK. There is always a chance that there's a few tumour cells that are still lurking there. Hopefully we've got them all, but you can't guarantee it. Fingers crossed, Custard is given the all clear. Now let's see how Nala, the poor little Shih Tzu, is doing. It's been almost two weeks since Inspector Jackie Miller rescued critically ill Nala. Today she's been called in to see her by the vet. I spoke to me yesterday and she'd had a bit of a funny turn. It was just such a setback. Tuesday when I saw her, she come running into the into the consult room on, on our lead, and she was barking at me. She keeps sort of getting to the point of, like, we're all very elated that she's, like, doing well, but then she goes downhill again, and um, she, just, she just gives her, gives us so much joy and then just, just so much pain at the same time. And it's not just Jackie who's been touched by this little dog's struggle. She's definitely pulling on everyone's heartstrings in the vets. And no one, wants to, no one wants to give up on her, and we don't want her to give up on life. And everyone's just willing to keep going. It's been confirmed that Nala has a liver condition that will need an operation. But at the moment, she's not strong enough for surgery. Vet George Giannopoulos has been looking after her. Hello, monkey! <laughs> This is not how you were supposed to be this morning. Oh, she's been barking lovely. All right, sweetheart. 
She's still really quite lethargic. Yes, she's quite lethargic. She's been like this, as we discussed, since yesterday. She's been closely monitored and uh, definitely she's shown some uh, new lovely signs since this morning because when we talked this morning she was quite unwell. You're still a little fighter. (laughs) Oh, she is, absolutely is. I don't want to give up on her. I think uh, we've got some decent chances Mm -hmm. of getting her back to normal. She has already shown us that. She can do it. She can do it, exactly. And at this point, all the actual problems are basically under um, the stable. Mm -hmm. But uh, are we out of the woods? Of course not. But this it's like, it's I'm... just because our little body, isn't it? Our little body was so far shutting down. Absolutely. It's just going to take so much to get absolutely. back up to that, absolutely. that point. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I think she can fight back. Mm-hmm. But if she can't and if she starts being severely unwell, you know that we will yeah. discuss further. Yeah. But at this time, I think she can, she can do more. She can do more than that. Can you, darling? Huh? You can. Can you not? She's lovely. She just pulls on my heartstrings. She's still really, really ill. Nala's definitely stolen the hearts of both George and Jackie. I will see you on the beach in Wheatley Bay next summer. Hmm? Is that right? We'll take her to South Shields first. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. We'll keep going. Um, and we'll keep going to that point where she needs her operation um, to get her that, you know, strong enough for that to happen. And then after that, she's got a really, really good prognosis that she can live a normal life once she's had that. I want to be standing here with a big, massive smile on my face this time next week. We'll check in on Nala later. Also coming up, we catch up with Rex, who survived starvation to come to the rescue of his new owner. He was borderline a euthanasia case when he came in. He was that badly emaciated. And if your home's just crying out for a rescue dog, we could have the one for you. Such a clever dog, aren't you? Earlier this series, we met Rex. As you can see, he's got such severe muscle wasting. There's nothing here at um, all, is That there? he's so weak, he doesn't have much to support his weight. He was rushed to Harmsworth Hospital. He was borderline a euthanasia case when he came in. Rex was just skin and bone and too weak to stand on his own. You know, I was really worried about the first yeah. 24, 48 hours or whether or not he'd actually make it. Fast forward three months and Rex has a new life with vet nurse Gail Fountain and her husband Steve. We instantly fell in love, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, we did, yeah. He, he was just amazing. Well, he struck up with us in a relationship with us straight away, didn't he? He did, yeah. Yeah, but... like he was already ours. <laughs> yeah, we've rescued two or three, haven't we, in the past? Uh, probably more than that. More than that, yeah. 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 Not, all, not all this naughty. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> Rex is now called Ravi, and he's joined a family of three other pooches, fellow rescue dogs Jake and Gabs and nine-year-old Rotty Mastiff Cross Keeley. G's been good for him to teach him some boundaries that you can't just jump all over everyone and steal everyone's toys and eat their food. He's got bags and bags of character, and it's almost like he knows it as well. And he quite often tries to make you laugh just doing soppy things, you know. Um, Sometimes he gets on the table. You need a kiss. Kiss, kissy. I don't know why he does that. (laughs) Just to make us laugh, I guess. Cheeky Ravi also has his gentle, loving side, and he's definitely a cuddly mummy's boy. Oh, nice. That's nice. (laughs) Oh. I generally spend a couple of hours on the sofa with him on a daily basis. Um, I've been having some chemotherapy. That's why there's a connection there for me and him. Our healing time, this is. I love all of my dogs equally, but he brings something different. It's like he knows that he needs to be soft and gentle with me at times. My precious boy. Oh, 
Sorry, darling. Big softy Ravi is now at a healthy weight. Ready, Rav? And able to enjoy his daily exercise. Yeah! <laughs> It's hard to believe that just a few months ago, this bouncy lad could barely stand on his own. Yeah, he likes running around with the dogs. He likes meeting new dogs. Yeah, he's, he's just a happy boy. Whatever yeah, he's, he's just, doing, he's a happy boy. He's got them all going recently as well. He's knocked a few years off the rest of the dogs, I think. It's a fantastic result for Ravi and for Gail and Steve too. He's such a valued member of our family. Somebody's missed out big time. He's done you the world of good, hasn't he? He's been the power of strength for me, yeah. Yeah. They say you get the dog you need. So. Yep, we needed him. And uh, hopefully he's the, we're the owners he needed. Yeah. We're glad to say that Gail is now in remission and is back at work. That's what I call a happy ever after. And the future also looks bright for Custard after her mastectomy. Animal care assistant Michelle Hayward is the bearer of good news. We got the results back and thankfully um, the results come back as benign, which means she is cancer free um, and she's going to go on and to live a long, happy life. She's absolutely recovered remarkably after such major surgery. Um, we expected her to be quite quiet and quite upset. She never has been. She's always just wanted to get out and play. For Playful Custard, it's a new lease of life. Of course, we're going to be absolutely thrilled when she finds a, a family of her, her own because she absolutely deserves to, um, but we are all going to miss her. Both Custard and Tippy, who was rescued with her, are hoping to find their forever home soon. Their original owners have been banned from keeping dogs for five years and given a 12-month community order. They're just brilliant dogs. They've really come out the shell and they're going to make really good companions for someone. But sadly, there's tragic news about little Nala the Shih Tzu. She battled for her life for four weeks. But in the end, she just wasn't strong enough to survive her condition. It's a horrible, horrible ending that, that she had, but we know that we've, we tried everything that we could, you know. She had a long way to fight, that little dog, unfortunately. Our little body just couldn't cope. But there has been some justice for poor Nala. Her owner has been traced and prosecuted for failing to meet Nala's needs. She was fined and banned from keeping animals for five years. As you've seen in the programme, many rescue dogs don't have the best start in life, but that doesn't mean that they can't make incredible pets. The RSPCA care for thousands of them, and there's often lots of work that needs to be done to get them ready for rehoming. And here's just one of the wonderful dogs they've been looking after. Good boy, well done. Good boy. Here we have Stanley, he's two year old. He's a crossbreed and he's been at Block Fen with us for three months. Hello, boy, good boy. He does get very stressed in the kennels. But once he gets in the home, I think he'll settle in well. Have a ball? Good boy. It's sad that he's here in kennels for so long. I've bonded with him quite well and it's quite nice to be with him, but he needs that home where he can just be a nice, happy dog and learn what being in a home is really like rather than in kennels. Stanley's looking for a home, an adult household only. He'd prefer a home with no animals just because he wants all the attention to himself. He'd rather have human contact where they're going to love him and spend most of their time with him. Good boy. Stanley deserves a nice family and lovely home where he's going to brighten up anyone's day. So, if you're looking for a four-legged best friend in your life, remember to make your local rescue centre your first stop, where you'll find plenty of deserving candidates desperate to brighten up your home. Next time on The Dog Rescuers. Come on, here we go. Come on, sweetheart. 
Two skinny dogs living in grim conditions. Their lives are transformed with the help of animal welfare officer Matt Brown. I can't tell what that type of dog is. It's that thing. I can tell you're a bit upset about this. It's an emotional sign over for three scared sisters with work to be done to bring them out of their shells. She's quite shy, so just building her confidence and then she will go up for e-homing. And meet raccoon dog Cedric. That's right, raccoon dog. Has he met the love of his life? She's doing some nice displaying. Um, he seems slightly less interested. Yeah. 